Hi, everyone. Um, I don't think anyone is on here yet. So I'm just, I wanted to start everything early just to make sure that everything live on YouTube. I've done it on Instagram, which was pretty straightforward. But um, okay, it's saying my connection is unstable, which is very sketchy. Um, let me just check one thing here. What's happening? Okay. I think that should be better now. So, I'm just going to wait for you guys to show up and uh, say hello. It looks like everything's working. Um, when you do join in, let me write some info. Audio's not too bad. Okay. So I'm just gonna talk about the hanger we're gonna do today. Let me go grab that. So this is the macrame plan, or sorry, the macrame wall hanging we're making today. Um, it's got these cute little tassels on the end. Super cute. Um, most people that ordered the kit did get these colors, but some people got other colors. So I'm going to be, um, it might get a little confusing later, but we'll figure it out as we go. Anyways, it's kind of weird because I feel like I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> so I'm going to wait for you guys to show up. Um, and turn it away from my face so I don't feel watched. So creepy. Oh, perfect. Okay, Rachel, I actually just sent you a message, so that works great. Um, I just got on to make sure that everything was working. Seems to be working. Um, how's the audio for you? Is it like too loud, too quiet? Right. And I love that I can read the messages from here. It's perfect. Um, so yeah, more people should be showing up shortly. I told everybody not to be late. <laughs> so we're just waiting for them. Um, but you got all these colors, right? It's your, you're all pinks. So it shouldn't get too confusing to you. But um, some people did order different colors because they didn't want pink. So we'll deal with that when we get to it. Um, but in the meanwhile, while we're waiting for everyone, you can just get set up, take out all your string, take off the, uh, the little tags with the numbers. Um, and yeah, make sure you have a set of scissors close by. You're going to need those. Um, measuring tape might come in handy, but it's not absolutely necessary. Yeah, now we wait. I'm going to turn turn around. This is the little setup. I've rigged. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty difficult to rig something up when you live in an RV, but managed to make it happen. And uh, as you can see, it's hanging from my window. <laughs> but 
we make it work, right? Yeah, so you can take off, go by color, and you'll, uh, you'll be able to figure it out by the colors that we're using. Um, and then sometimes the string gets kind of jumbled up, so if you want to unwind them, make sure they're not stuck together. I'm kind of thinking that I should have background music playing. It's so quiet in here. It's very different than a live class because usually now is the time where everybody's looking around and saying hello and introducing themselves. Um, you know, online stuff is fun, but we do what we can in a pandemic. Awesome. Oh, I see we have some, some new people. I'll come say hello. Oops, I hung my string up. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's awesome, Rachel. I'm glad you chose to um, do a class with us. And this is not my first online class. I did one back in March. It was when the pandemic first started. It was either March or April. But we did it via Instagram Live, and it was kind of similar, a little bit different than the YouTube, but um, I think YouTube's probably going to work better. I see we have some newcomers. Say hello. Who's here? I think, I, if I'm not positive, I think we should have six or seven tonight. So... We'll wait for everybody. Um, in the meanwhile, for those of you that just joined in, get your string out, um, get some scissors. If you have a measuring tape, that would work. If not, oh well, I usually measure by finger lengths anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, you can take all your um, string out and uh, make sure if you wanna just start with the white, can do that and unjumble it because that's the first one we're going to be using. Um, yeah. I guess some people can't do the chat. It's so weird feeling I'm kind of talking to myself. <laughs> so um, I guess I'll most of you probably know me already, but I'll introduce myself. I'm Caitlin. I'm the maker behind Minimalist Macrame. And um, I'm hoping to make these classes a regular thing in the new year. So I've kind of figured out that we're probably not going to have in-person classes anytime soon. So I'll keep doing these. And uh, awesome. Hi, Bella. <laughs> Just got a text from my dad saying my little sister's joining in, so super excited about that. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, I'm hoping to do hopefully one a month. That would be great. If not, you know, one every two months. But I was um, asking my people on Instagram today what they would be interested in um, learning about if we do do another class in the new year. And um, so if you have any suggestions, I'll take them. Whatever you want to learn about. Not necessarily has to be a tutorial, but it could be, you know, just some questions you have about getting started doing macrame. Maybe you want to know how I started the business. 
anything like that. I'm gonna get started in about minutes. Just wanna give everyone the opportunity. Brenda, if you're on here, you better say hello. Let's see if she messaged me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh no. We'll get it done. You can always rewatch after if your internet shuts off or whatever. I'm gonna save it. So um, if anyone like, you know, gets lost in the midst or whatever, you can always go back and rewatch the class. Okay, we lost someone. Maybe it was Brenda. We lost her. Internet is awful, apparently. Living in the country has its ups and its downs. Can everybody hear me well? I actually, like, had a really hard time working with the microphone on my computer because it's not a new computer. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the mic was awful. So right now I just have my iPod headphones plugged in with the microphone, and I'm not actually like speaking into the microphone. So I hope that it's loud enough. It seemed like it was way too loud when I was speaking into the microphone earlier. <clears throat> okay, anyways, let's get started. Everybody um, take out your string. And um, we're going to use the white string first. You can untie the white string, get it all, um, you know, unjumbled. I gotta put this on focus mode so I don't get distracted. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do, um, I have, I'll show you the setup here. I have mine set up so you can see it. I want you to be able to see me doing the knots, but you can just have it in your lap or on the table or whatever suits you. I know most of you don't have this great elaborate setup <laughs> I actually tied it to the window to, <laughs> to hang it. Very professional. Um, anyways, so what we're going to do, and let me know if I need to slow down at all, or if you have any questions, just type them in. Um, so we're going to get started. So take, you have two pieces of white string. I want you to take one of those pieces of white string, and you're going to fold it in half. All right, now. Oh, there we go. Hi. Amazing. Okay, maybe I'll just wait another two seconds, get everybody situated. Hello. Welcome. So we're just going to dive in here. Um, we're going to get started by taking out your white string, which um, Muriel not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I am. Um, I know you asked for different colors. So it's going to be your six foot string, the one that was labeled six feet. So those are the, that's the string we're going to start with. Um, I feel like we're missing someone. Maybe they couldn't join in right away, but that's okay. Um, so anyways, yes, we're going to start with the six foot string, which is the white string for most of you. Um, and I was just saying that I have an elaborate setup where the dowel is hanging, but you don't have to do that. You can just have it in your lap or on the table or whatever you like. So, um, also I mentioned before, but everyone is going to need a pair of scissors. Very important, most important tool and hands, of course, those are important. Um, so yeah, let me know when you have all your string out and I'll start doing the first knot. Oh, 
I don't want to go too fast for anyone. So usually the beginning is the slowest because you have to get everything organized and get your setup. Hope everyone's got a big glass of wine or a cup of tea or something like that. I recently learned that I can't drink tea after five o'clock or I won't sleep, so. Oh, it's only four o'clock. I could have had a cup of tea. Too late now, though. Okay. So, let's get started with the first knot. Everybody ready? So, this first knot is called. Um, it's called a lark's head knot. It's, it's also called a cow's head knot in some texts, but um, most macrame makers call it a lark head, lark's head knot. Um, so what you're gonna do is you want to take your string, fold it in half, and you're gonna have a loop at the top of the string. So what you wanna do is you hold the loop over the front of your dowel, and now we're gonna go a little bit off the center. We wanna go a, about an inch from the middle to the left side. So you're gonna hold the loop over the front like this. And now you're going to pull it underneath the dowel. So you have the little loop back here. And you're going to pull all this, ends of the string through that loop. So it should look like this. Uh oh. I don't know what's going on outside. But. And then once you have that done, you're going to tighten it. Make it pretty tight on the dowel. And now you want to look and see if it's straight and don't worry about it being perfectly straight so yeah about an inch off the center you can always wiggle it around later too if it uh, ends up not being centered so there's your first lark's head knot and now you're going to repeat that process with the second one, the second white string, the second six foot string, and you're gonna put it on the left of that one. So I'm gonna go over it again. Put your loop over top of the dowel, pull it under, and then pull the strings through the loop. All right, and that's the basis for the first part. So now those those uh, knots are pretty much the most popular way. Oh, I'm talking with my hands. You can see them. <laughs> pretty much the most popular way to start a wall hanging in macrame. There's a few other knots that uh, you can do, but this is the most basic, most used. You'll probably see it in almost every piece that you uh, see from now on. And so if you guys can comment that you're ready, that would be awesome. I don't want to go too fast. Awesome, Rachel's ready. I think Rachel's gonna be my star pupil. <laughs> okay, everybody's ready. Brenda ready, Bella ready. I wonder, there should, should be a Jody with us as well. Okay, let's, is, this knot is called a spiral knot, and uh, it's 
super versatile. You may remember it from making friendship bracelets from when you were a kid, but what you're gonna do is take the four strings and you want the right string to go under the two middle strings like this. You make a little four, figure four, and then this, the right string is gonna go over the left string. So it should look like that. It should look like that. And then you're going to take the left string and pull it over the two middle strings and through the loop. So here, I'll show you. So that's what it should look like. And don't worry if you missed it because we're gonna be doing this a couple times. So now you tighten it. And the trick here is to get, you don't want it too tight and you don't want it to be too loose. It's kind of like you have to get that Goldilocks um, tension. Anyways, I'll repeat it. And you guys can repeat it too. Um, we're going under the two middle strings over the left string and we're pulling the left string over the two middle and through the loop and it should look like that so now for this we're going to repeat um you're gonna repeat it probably about 20 times. And we're gonna make it loop back up. So, we'll just keep going. And this is, you know, the tedious part about macrame, but also the part that's a little bit soothing and kind of, what's that word? Meditating. And that's why it's kind of great. It's very, it's kind of like, you know, any other fiber art, like knitting or crochet or whatever. Once you get the hang of it and you're, uh, you're pretty good at it, you can just, you know, sit in front of the TV and do it. You can do it when you're waiting in a lineup at the hospital. I don't know. <laughs> but, okay, so you're going to see that it's starting to move. See that? It's starting to make a spiral. And um, that's why they call it the spiral knot. So you can keep going until it gets too annoying to try and do it from that side. And you'll get it when you get it. And then see how it's spiraling like that now? Now I'll just use this one as my right. How's it going? Everybody getting it? So see how, I'll bring you a little bit closer. See how it's not too tight? Still got a little give in it. So that's the trick to making um, it flexible enough to do the U shapes that we're aiming for, and also the trick to um, just keeping it looking tidy. So here we go. So yeah, you're gonna wanna do this about 20 times for this. So this is the only beef I have with online classes is that I can't look at your work. I can't go up and help you if, if you need, but you know, I hope that you're all getting it pretty well. You can see it's starting to spiral. Oh, I love that. 
Um, so yeah, you want to keep going until it's long enough that you can attach it to the other side. I'll show you what the finished product looks like so that you can get an idea. So this is what the finished one is going to look like. And so we're just going to keep going. I don't even know how many I did. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's funny because when you watch tutorials and you know videos on YouTube and on Instagram, it seems like everything is so quick. But generally, I know when I'm making any kind of video for YouTube or for Instagram, I'm speeding up about at least six times as fast as how fast I actually go because it, it takes a while and uh, you know, you get faster as you practice more, but it's still a practice in patience. Okay. A little bit longer. Okay, I'm gonna count these again. Okay, so I'm at 20 now. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a baseline number. You don't have to do exactly 20, but see how it makes the spiral there. Everybody make a little comment when you are at your 20 knots, okay? Or around there anyways. So yeah, this knot is also the same knot that we use to make our plant hangers. You may tell from like, this is usually on the arm of a plant hanger. Um, it's also used in, hmm, what else uses this knot? Bracelets, of course. And um, yeah, soon after, when you guys are all set, oh, perfect. Yay, good job. Um, now when you're all done, we're going to fake one of these lark's head knots. Lark's head, yeah. Okay, I jumble over my words saying that sometimes. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a big trick to learn in macrame is to fake knots, especially when you're doing a semicircle pattern because you can't attach them at the bottom. You attach them at the top like that. But then other hangings, they just make two lines and they attach them in the middle. Okay, that's a huge part of macrame too. If you don't like how it looks, don't be afraid to undo it and start over. That's totally fine. Making mistakes of learning and when you go back and fix them honestly you have no idea how many times I've had to rip apart a whole project and start fresh <laughs> it's just part of the learning process I'm gonna start seeing elevator music soon Thank you. 
So I'm going to move on for those that are ready. And don't worry, I'll take my time so that way you guys can catch up. But um, what we're going to do now is you want to pull it up to the top here. And the string that's on the left, that's left, right? Yeah, that's left. Um, the string that's on the left is what you're going to use to fake this knot. So you're going to take this string and you want to put it it's kind of hard to see you're going to pull it in front of the dowel and then behind like that and you're going to pull the string from the back through on the left see how I did that now make sure it's kind of snug and you use the string and you're gonna go under the dowel this time, like this. Under the dowel and then pull the end over and pull it through the loop. And wiggle it tight. And voila, you faked a lurk set knot. I'll repeat it. So we're gonna do two of those, one with the other string here. Um, but I'll wait a minute because I know some, some people are gonna want me to redo it. Everybody having fun doing their spiral knots? <laughs> the hardest part with the spiral knot, I find, is um, actually getting it to spiral. When you're first starting, sometimes it's hard to keep repeating it on the same side and getting it to spiral, but it's all in that tension and just got to practice. Okay, so let's do the fake lark, lark's head knot again. So what you're gonna do is take one of these strings that's you know closest to the outside and you're going to tuck it over the dowel and pull it behind the dowel. Now, it looks a little trickier here because you can't see as much, but there is a space in here between the dowel and the knot beside. So you're going to want to pull that string through that space so that it's dangling in front, but it's coming through on the left side. And now when you do that, you scooch it tight a bit and then you take your string and you go under the dowel, under the dowel and oh, we have something that looks like that. And then you're gonna pull it through that loop space, just like that.
And then we're going to tighten it again. Now, don't worry if you've missed that. We're going to repeat it a few times, four times to be exact. Um, yeah, once you're ready there, you're going to keep going on your spiral knot. But as you'll notice, there are some pieces of string that are much shorter than others. I just want to make sure everybody's on on par. So I'm trying to go a little bit slow. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Um, so what you're going to want to do, I don't know how this one got so short, actually. But anyways, you want the two shorter pieces to be your middle strings. And then the two longer pieces of string are what are going to be on the outsides. So these are my two longer pieces of string on the outside here. And I'm going to keep doing the knot that we were doing before, the spiral knot. So fold it under the two middle, over the left, and then the left is going to go over the two middle and through the loop. Now, see how it's so much longer than the middle strings? So I tighten it. So this is kind of tricky, but honestly, don't worry about getting it too tight up to the top because um, it's not going to be very visible once you get all the other pieces of the hanger on. Okay, so we just continue doing this. Um, I'm not sure approximately how many. Let me look at my notes. About 15 times for this one. Um, but realistically, you want to go, like if this is your shortest piece of string, which <laughs> is mine, you're going to want to go like halfway. Probably about three inches something like that yeah three inches so let's say three inches worth of knot <clears throat> and you just keep going keep keep knotting just keep knotting just keep knotting if any of you have watched oh what was that movie nemo any of you watched Finding Nemo, you'd get the reference. <laughs> you know, we watched it a hundred thousand times in my house growing up. Oh, here comes Andrew. Hi. <laughs> and we're gonna have pizza for dinner which i'm super excited about and i think my stomach's starting to growl already
All right, I'm going to count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's go full 15. Why not? 13. 14. 15. Okay, there we go. And you can um, like manipulate it a bit to make it look prettier. Very flexible string. Okay guys, so that is the beginning and we're gonna repeat all of those steps four times, one time for each color. So we did our white. The next color in your kit is going to be the dark pink or you can just look at whichever um, one was marked as eight feet. <clears throat> For those of you that didn't want pink, I have no idea why pink is the best color, but anyways, <laughs> no judgment. For me, I actually ran out of pink string before this. I wasn't, uh, I forgot to save some. So I'm going to be using green for this next one. So like before, what we're going to do is get out your string and make sure the ends are even. You're folding it in half like that. I must have skipped this step when I did this. That's probably why that one is so short. So we've got it folded in half. And there's our loop. All right. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. This is quite the uh, interesting way to do macrame, but anyways. Okay, so remember what we did before? We put the loop on top and we fold it underneath. So it looks like that. And then you pull the strings through the loop. Tighten it. Ooh, I really like this green. So I'm super excited because a friend of mine is getting married in September and she just asked me to do a wedding backdrop for them. And she wants it to be in this green color. So I'm like super stoked to do that. It's gonna look so great. All right, so we did the first eight foot string. Now we're gonna do the second eight foot string. We've got our ends even and we're gonna do another lark's head knot so we'll put it over under and then pull the strings through and there's your four strings to start doing more spiral knots so with the beginner classes I usually teach you know the project may vary but I try to teach a lark's head knot a spiral knot and a square knot which is actually very similar to the spiral knot but instead of doing it on the same side you alternate so that it's flat and not curved like that and then I usually teach a gathering knot, which is what we're gonna use to make the tassel at the bottom. But we're gonna do that at the end, um, just because it's easier to do four in a row than it is to do one and then come back and do this and then, you know, that kind of thing. So anyways, we're gonna keep doing our spiral knots here. So go under the two middle, over the left. The left goes over the two middle and through the loop. I think this is my new favorite color. This green is awesome. Who loves green? Put your hand up. I don't know. I think I'm kind of biased though because I pick all the colors that I wear. <laughs> so I pretty much love all of them. 
So yeah, for this one, it was 20 times on the other one. I'm gonna estimate, I don't actually know because I didn't count, but I'm gonna estimate it's about 30 times on this one. So we'll, we'll count them out. I'm at three now. How's everybody doing over there? Muriel, did you get your first color done? Did everybody catch those uh, fake lark's head knots or do I have to do it again? Haven't heard a peep from Brenda or Logan as, <laughs> as the computer's <laughs> saying. <clears throat> That's all right, you're a beginner. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna look back and laugh on it. You can always uh, finish it and then once, usually when something looks bad, once it's like in the middle of a bunch of other stuff, it doesn't look as bad. So maybe the other ones will be better, hopefully. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the only thing that you won't be able to undo is the tassel. So do that tassel last. You can go back to it once you're done the class. <clears throat> so if you just leave it hanging like this, it'll be fine. Okay. Let's see how many we've got here. I know it's not long enough, but I just want to keep track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I mean, the setup isn't too bad for being in an RV. Last time we did class, well, sorry. I did try using um, clothing racks, like the ones that you buy for like 15 bucks at Walmart and you can hang jackets on and stuff. I, uh, I tried using those, but unfortunately, some lady kept pulling on her thing like this so much that it actually fell down and it was awful <laughs> it was like so funny but i had to stop myself from laughing <clears throat> anyways nobody got hurt it was fine but i stopped doing that after that and uh when i did the last online class i was still in my apartment so i just had my whole setup on the wall and I used my my cell phone on a, um, what do they call those, tripod, tripod stand. And that worked beautifully. But the only issue that I continually have is lighting. So I guess I should be investing in some better lighting. Didn't turn out too awful today. But you know what? I didn't really think about it, about the fact that it's going to be it was dark outside. The sun is set now. It's dark out. So much better with natural light, but winter. Woohoo. Okay, we're almost there. So yeah, once you guys master this, making our, if you want to go and look at our boho hanger tutorial, you'll be masters at that too, because it's pretty much all this knot. <laughs> and uh, the only difference is that you make a basket for a plant to go in essentially.
So guys, I hope you're liking macrame so far. If this is your first time, I'm assuming it is. It's pretty much what you do. You know what, sometimes your hands start to hurt, especially if you're doing a big piece. I usually do it standing up. So sometimes my back starts to hurt. If it's like weird angle, my shoulders will hurt too, but it's only when you're doing it a lot. Otherwise, it's pretty great, especially for something this size, because you can just put it on your lap when you're watching TV and have at it. I've been watching um, this show on Prime Video, I think it is. And it's called The Magicians. And I'm actually loving it because they have so many Harry Potter references in it. <laughs> and I'm a, I, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Probably have read their books about 30 times each. It's like way too much. But yeah, they reference Harry Potter. And what's that other... Oh, they made a reference to another magic show the other day, and I laughed. Game of Thrones. They made a Game of Thrones reference. Love that. Now, if we were talking face-to-face, -face, I would ask if you guys have any recommendations. Okay, I think that's probably good. Mm -hmm. I'll do a couple more knots. Okay, I'm gonna count these just for your guys' reference. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So that's forty-six. 36, sorry. And I think that's about right. I probably could have went even less and done 30. But anyways, we're just gonna do it like that. Um, so yeah, anywhere between 30 and 40 knots is good. And then you're gonna do your fake lark's head again. So pull it up, take the string you know what? I'm gonna take the longer string. So take the middle string and put it in front like that. Pull it behind. It's kind of confusing because there's so many strings there, but pull it behind and then you're gonna sneak it in on the left side here. And you're gonna go under the dowel. And you're gonna pull the string through the loop. Okay. I just wanna get it nice and tight. There we go. And now you do it again. Pull it in front, around, to the left, behind. Oh, gosh. Way too short. We're doing it with the longer ones, okay, guys? <laughs> I don't know how I did it with this. Over top, on the left around and pull through. And tighten it. There we go. I'm just sitting on my foot and now it's asleep. <laughs> That's great. Okay, and then you keep uh, 
can do the same thing you did before. We want the short ones to be in the middle and the longer ones to be on the outside. Might take a little finagling. Finagling. And keep making your spiral knots. If you wanna like hold that up a bit, you can. It's kind of in the way. You can always adjust it afterwards. It's very malleable. Mm -hmm. I never realized how weird this feels doing it from the side. It's very strange. Okay, so for this one, this one's gonna be a little bit longer than the other one. Probably go down to like here, four inches. It's really your preference, like whatever you want it to look like after. All we wanna make sure is that there's enough leftover underneath to make a tassel. Okay, so now I'm on about the same length. I'm gonna go a little bit longer. Got it a little bit longer there. You guys can see, I hope. So yeah, got these strings in the middle and then the strings on the ends should still be long enough. Um, we're actually going to cut one of those to make the knot for the tassel. Oh my goodness, it's freezing in here. So now you're done your second color. Um, that was the eight foot. So now we have two colors that are 12 feet. And we're gonna do the first one. So for the pink, um, the light pink I did next. You guys can actually do it however you like, as long as, well, they're both 12 feet, so it doesn't really matter organize it however you like. Um, I am going to use this rust color for this. So as before, we hold the string in half, make sure the ends are the same length, 
and then we do our lurks head knot. So we put the string over top, hold it under, pull the other strings through that loop. and tighten it and you're going to do the same with the other string of the same color and you know what i just had an idea if you wanted to since the string colors are the same length you could alternate and it would look kind of cool because it would be like two-toned i don't know i'm not going to do that but if you if you wanted to get funky you could totally do it Hold it in half, make our lark's head knot. So sometimes um, when you read like a macrame pattern or something, they will abbreviate the knots. So LHK is lark's head knot. And then spiral knot will be SK. Um, actually, no, that's wrong. I think SK is square on. Usually they'll tell you in the pattern what the abbreviations is anyways, but. Okay, and now we keep going. Do some more spiral knots. So this one was 20, this one was 36 or something I said. I would have went 30, I should have. Darn it. Anyways, so I think we're going to do 40 for this one. 40 knots. Is everybody getting the hang of the spiral knot now? Tension and whatnot. Don't feel bad if you haven't. Um, takes a while. I've been doing this for almost two years now, so... That's why mine look good. <laughs> wow, almost two years. Min Minimalist macrame will have its second birthday in April, April 1st, I think, is when I made my Etsy shop. And around this time last year was when we first started taking off and getting actual sales. Before that, it was kind of just like for fun and a hobby. And I just, you know, took a few photos of some things I made and put them on Etsy just for fun. My friends were telling me I should sell it. So I said, why not? And then, yeah, about this time last year, Christmas time, I think it was November, it was Women's Day, so it was, no, it wasn't. It was November sometime. It was right before Andrew's birthday, so it must have been November 17th or 18th. And um, we did our first market, which blew me away. I was, like, so shocked at how many people supported us and wanted to know more and blah, blah, blah. And that's how I actually got the idea of doing the classes, because... I had so many people ask me at that first market if I do classes and I was like, well, no, but give me your email and I will. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, questions. Um, can you walk me through attaching it again? Okay. How long do you need for the tassel? So for the tassel, we're going to need like about two or three inches. Three inches, preferably. This one I have four inches at the shortest part. Four inches, that would be perfect. If not, three will do. Um, I will walk you through attaching it again. So what we're gonna do is you take your string. Um, it's gonna be one of the strings that are up at the spiral knot here, and you wanna use the longer string. So you take the string, you put it in front. Oh, you can't really see that. You put it in front of the dowel and pull it behind and then you pull the string to the left and pull it in front so it should look like that
and then pull it in, sorry, pull it under and over. Whack the camera, sorry. And then you're gonna pull it through that little loop. So this is what it should look like before you tighten it. Is that good? I'll do it one more time. Gotta untie it though. <laughs> What the heck is going on here? Okay, there we go. Okay, so one more time, we're gonna fake the lark's head. We're gonna pull it in front. And then behind. And you want the end of the string to come to the left. Pull it so it's nice and tight. And then on this part of the string, you're gonna go under the dowel and then you're gonna pull it over the dowel and you wanna go through this loop. It's very confusing with all this long string that we have right now, but that's what it's gonna look like before you tighten it. And then you tighten it nice and tight. And you're going to use another string, the other long string, and do the same thing again so you have two fake lurks head. Make sense? Okay, let me redo it. It's kind of difficult because I already did the end of the spiral, but. So this is your spiral. You're gonna pull it up like this. And then you're gonna have four cords up here, two of which are gonna be longer than the others. So you're gonna use the longer ones to do these knots. And so you take the long one and you put it in front. Say this is all spiral, obviously. You lay it on top of the dowel and then tuck it behind the dowel so that it looks like that. Let's zoom in a little bit. So it's gonna just, you know, hang on the dowel like that. And then you're going to want your string, the long piece of string to come to the front, but you're gonna pull it on the left. So it has to be on the left side. So it's gonna be in front of this piece, but hanging to the left. Can you see that? Kind of hard to see, hey? So this is your string from the back. It's coming out the left. Okay, so once you have it like that, you're going to fold it up again, but you're going to run it under the dowel. Come That's what it's gonna look like. Oh my gosh, this is not helping. <laughs> so there's your spiral knots. Comes behind the dowel through the loop to the front on the left, and then behind the dowel. And that's where this part comes in. And then you're gonna tuck this part 
through this big loop in the front. So that's what it should look like. And here, I'll put my hand behind it. So that way you can see. It's kind of difficult to master. This is actually not a very beginner move, but uh, we've incorporated it here because we're doing the semicircle. So that's what it's gonna look like before you tighten it. And then once you tighten it, it will look like your average lark's head. I'm just gonna leave that for a few minutes just to make sure you got it. Sweet, perfect. All right. Now, how's everyone doing? Are we still on spiral number two? Has anybody gotten to their third color yet? Or am I way ahead of everybody? back it up a bit. Okay, I think there's a window open in here. Excuse me while I close it. So one thing about living in an RV is that it doesn't hold heat very well. Kind of crazy how cold it gets as soon as the sun goes down. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this spiral here. anyone has, wants me to go over anything else or has any other questions, just let me know. Probably not the only one. So generally this takes about, for me it would take about an hour and a half if I'm actually focused on it. Um, Usually when we're in a class, go a little bit slower. It takes about two hours. Once you're done getting like, you know, the finishing touches, it's about two and a half hours. It's the same with the plant hanger. And I try to keep the classes around two hours just so people don't get too bored. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. All right, so I get a good spiral here. This is also an awesome color. We just got this one in. It's our rust color. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it again because it's super popular and the supply ran out. So if we do get another rust, it might be a different tone. <clears throat> but anyways, it's pretty great while it lasts. I've been like dreaming up projects to make for myself with this color because I freaking love it. I just bought a uh, duvet cover you guys may have seen on my Instagram stories. Anyways, they advertised it as this exact color and I bought it and I was so excited and I waited a whole month for it to arrive in the mail. 
and I open up the box and it was like, excuse my language, but it was shit brown. And I was so mad. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And then I get home. I him and haw about returning it. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to like try it on the bed to see what happens. So I really didn't want to go through the process of returning something. And then I put it on the bed and somehow magically it changes colors completely when I put it on the bed and it becomes the rust color that I knew I ordered. And I was like shocked. Anyways, all that lighting difference, I guess. But yeah, moral of the story, make sure you know what color you're buying. And sometimes it doesn't look the same in the bag as it does on the bed. I love these colors together. The pink is actually super cute too. <clears throat> and I think I think it was you, Muriel. You had the, the green and the yellow. I'd love to see how that turns out after. And Brenda got gray and blue which also would be nice. I'd love to see it in your newly renovated house, Brenda. Okay, so we're more than halfway done. We got two colors down, working on the third. Is everybody else on their third? So now it's starting to get weird because you can see me nodding, but I'm like going out of the, well, I think you all know how to do this knot by now anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna do like, okay, I'm gonna count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. I'm at thirty, so I got about ten more knots. I'm estimating. So that's the thing. Every macrame maker is different. I am a very go with the flow kind of person. Um, I don't usually, <laughs> to be honest with you, I never was measuring things and counting knots and anything until I started making patterns and tutorials which is when I actually had to start you know doing all that um but some people actually you know sit down with a pen and paper and plan everything out jot it out before they do it I kind of just think it in my head and start going sometimes when I'm trying to make something new I'll like sit from start to finish in my mind before I start and I've learned that you always need to write down especially as a business owner you need to write down how much materials you've used and not only as a business owner but if you want to recreate something it's nice to like be able to just look back and say okay I used this much string of this color and yada yada so if you ever want to do that if you make something and you really like it make sure you write down how much string you used and it's also useful to write down how much string you cut off and how much string is wasted afterwards because um, sometimes you do end up wasting a lot of string especially if you're making a big project and uh, 
you never really know how much it's going to use. Some people use a general rule of thumb is like you do three times, you cut your string to three times the length that you want your finished pro project to be, but it really depends on how many knots you have, how intricate it is, <clears throat> how much like white space you have kind of thing. So it's different for every project. Okay. More, 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 more. And that's kind of the most difficult part of macrame and also the most rewarding is just like figuring out what works for you, how much you need, blah, 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 and planning it all out in your head and that kind of thing. I am like, I don't want to waste a single piece of string. So <laughs> that's why I sent you guys six feet and, you know, there's only this much left because I hate having to chop off a bunch of string and waste it. Um, I follow other macrame makers that make like, you know, some project, some projects from their string cutoffs, which are pretty cool. Like I'm sure all of you have seen um, like macrame feathers and stuff like that. Keychains even, those are pretty cute. So that's a good way. Um, I've also been making some macrame tassels that I might, I have, like, I have like a little box full of tassels. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do with them yet. I might just make a hanging of just tassels. I don't know, but that's the hoarder in me, I guess. <laughs> Okay, this is definitely more than 40 knots, but we're almost there. And you know, we're attaching these at the side, but once you get into your own groove and wanna make your own style of things, you could always just like do a bunch of spiral knots with tassels on the bottom like this, or you could do like a spiral knot, a square knot. I've seen many different things um, online that use, that are, you know, unique to your style. Okay, I'm gonna attach this again. For anyone who wants to watch this attaching, now is the time. I think you guys probably all got it pretty good now though. Um, Okay, so longest string, we're gonna bring it in front. We're gonna tuck it, tuck it behind. It's really difficult to see here because I'm got so much string in the way, but anyways. This is the end of the string, yes. I'm pulling the end to the left of the spiral. So it's gonna look like that with the end coming out here. And go under the dowel this time. And then pull your end through that loop. It's gonna look just like that. And tighten. Now sometimes you have to with these dowels, they're unfinished, and I don't, a lot of people like to stain theirs, but I don't stain mine. And uh, the unfinished dowels kind of make it hard to. Stuff sometimes, but it's a little, a little bit of grease should work. Okay, that one's short. I want the long one. Here's the long one. Pull it in front, behind to the left and under and through the loop. Now there's quite a shadow there when I'm doing this actually. It's kind of hard to get rid of that. Okay, and now we tighten it real good. 
pull this string actually. Okay, it looks weird because one of the strings is poking through the front. So I'm gonna loosen my knot and I'm gonna put this string that's hanging in the front, I'm gonna pull it through to the back. So it's not like looking strange. Um, I just noticed I didn't do that on the other side. Anyways, whatever. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Oh my goodness, I love those colors together. Wow, wow. Okay, guys. So now we continue with our spiral knots. Make sure you're using the long ones as the outer, because as you can tell, the outer ones shorten faster because you're using them to tie all your knots. And uh, we don't want to be left with not enough string for a tassel. So, so there we go. Nice and tight at the top. La di da. Now at the end of this, I'm gonna ew. It's a fruit fly or something. Gross. Um, at the end of this, I'm gonna show you how to hang it. Um, it's a pretty small hanger, so we're just gonna add like a little piece in the middle. This, I can show you how to do these knots as well, if you'd like. Um, I usually do this and then just tuck a string behind everything else, but it, there's lots of space here where you can see everything, so I might not do that for this one. But yeah, it's very small, so we're just going to add something to hang it in the middle, and you can either hang it on, you know, you can be old school, hang it on a tack, or you can get a command hook to put it up. Um, Dollarama has like picture hanging kits that you can use. The picture hanging kits are all actually the best. They're like my favorite item from Dollarama. They even come with wire. So you can like put a little nail, two little nails on the side and then run the wire through the back so you can't see it. Trivia, very good. I hope you guys love my random French. <laughs> I've actually been um, trying to learn Spanish. I don't know if you guys have heard of Duolingo, but it's a really great app that uh, teaches you different languages. I think there's like, I don't know, 30 different languages on there or something. It's crazy. And I don't know if it's the most conventional way of learning how to speak a language. Cause you know, usually when you start school and you start learning, um, they teach you like letters and numbers and the word cat and how to tell the weather and blah, blah, blah. But this just kind of, you dive right in and you learn grammar alongside the words. It's easier on there because I went to French immersion for a few years in my life. So it was easy to go through the French Duolingo, but with the Spanish, it's very different. <laughs> but it is very, the Spanish language is very similar to French in many ways. Like they have a masculine and feminine um, verbs. I think don't quote me on that but it's kind of similar anyways now when I go to Mexico when the or, or when the pandemic's finished I can ask for a cerveza and you know how to run away when people yell a little fuego <laughs> 
Okay, yes. Okay, I wasn't wrong. Thank you for clarifying. I uh, had a neighbor when I lived in Quebec. When I was in Ottawa, I lived on the Hull side and our neighbor, he was, you know, fluent in French and English and Spanish. And uh, he used to have friends over and you could hear them in the backyard, you know, speaking, speaking Spanish. And sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between Spanish and French, or maybe they were speaking some sort of like, you know, Spanish, but uh, seems very similar languages. And I think that's probably why he picked up on it so quickly. He said he learned it in like under a year. Coolest neighbor ever. It was actually a couple and uh, he was a paragliding instructor and a carpenter and she um, worked at Mac and they were just like the coolest people to have around. Oh crap, I messed this up. Um, just so nice and so friendly. He took Andrew and I both paragliding, which was cool. It's one of the coolest experiences ever actually. Okay. Genders of nouns aren't the same in both languages. Oh. Oh, weird. You know a lot about Spanish, Mariela. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so for those of you that didn't read that, we're talking about Spanish and Muriel said, to mess you up some more, the genders of the nouns aren't the same in both languages. For example, milk in Spanish is feminine and in French it's masculine, which is super interesting. So I wonder like if they were part of the same language before they diverged into separate languages and that's maybe why they're so similar and why they have like masculine and feminine. I have no idea about languages, mind you. I was a bio major, so <laughs> definitely don't know much about it, but. Okay, so I've gone, I could go further here, actually. I'm going to, I think, make it a little bit longer. What does this one look like? Okay, yeah. In the finished one, the middle Sorry, the third color is gonna be the longest. So I went way longer there, so I'm gonna keep going. Oh, okay, cool. You took Spanish in high school. They didn't even offer that in my high school. That's so neat. We were very English speaking high school. We took French. This was in um, Nova Scotia, mind you, not Ontario. So it's not as, not as French leaning, but there is, you know, Acadian culture in Cape Breton. So there is lots of French um, and in the Maritimes in general, New Brunswick is super French. <clears throat> but I wish I could have learned Spanish, but I guess now's the time. Better late than never. One language um, I always found, I thought it would be very difficult to learn, but a friend of mine actually proved me otherwise when he learned it in like under a year, um, is Cantonese. He used Rosetta Stone. This was like, you know, back in, I think, 2012 or something oh my gosh it's almost 10 years ago um but yeah he learned it all from rosetta stone and then he went and taught english as a second language which is like amazing anyways someday i'll know all the languages or maybe not <laughs> okay 
So now at this point, you just wanna look at it and make it visually appealing with the lengths of the tassels. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna start on my last color. Okay, so this is the last color that should be left, one of your 12 foot string colors. And I'm gonna use beige, but actually, yes. Okay, so this cappuccino color, as it's called on our website, um, is gonna be the same for you guys that got the pink kit and unsure about the people that changed their colors, but anyways, it's the longest string that you have in your kit, so it should be 12 feet long. We're gonna do our Lark's Head Knot. Now I'm looking at this and feeling like it may be off-centered. It's kind of hard to see from the side, but I might have to push these over a bit after, we'll see. Well, you guys, I'm so excited Pizza time soon. Wonder what's after five o'clock. Okay, so that string, this string. Yeah, I definitely have to move these up. Okay. So if you guys need to do this, all you really have to do not a big deal is hold it from the top or like from the side and just scooch the strings over scooch a little bit to the right there we go and uh there is that better or did i just make it worse oh, these go over here a little bit Anyways, I think that looks good. It's straight and outable if you need to. Everything can be edited. Okay, and now we're on our last color. Anyone else? I'm so excited. This is going to be cute. So now, who should I send this wall hanging to as a Christmas gift? <laughs> it's so funny because, like, I make so much stuff that I don't end up selling on my website. You know, obviously, you don't sell everything you put up. Um, so now I just have, like, this secret closet full of macrame. And I never sold. Don't tell anyone that. Um, so if you guys have like, you know, someone you want to send a random macrame piece to, let me know. Got tons. My boyfriend, Andrew, he asked me why I have so much closet space the other day and it's literally because half of the closet I have filled with macrame stuff like spools of cord and I have like a shoe box full of pre-made plant hangers and so much oh yeah I feel like everyone who has some sort of craft just has like a stash of stuff. Someone on Instagram today, she's a, those of you in Ottawa may know, 
the naughty maker. She also does macrame. Anyways, she <laughs> she posted a photo on Instagram today, and it was just like a picture of her studio, and it was a disaster. And she's like, is anyone else in the same boat? And all I could do was laugh because our RV right now, because it's, you know, the busiest time of the year and been filling orders and making stuff and blah, blah, blah. It's covered. It's covered in like dowels and printer paper and tape and envelopes and <laughs> string. And <laughs> it's crazy, but I love it. Andrew might not love it so much, but he deals with it. He puts up with me. It's okay. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're getting it done. We're almost done. <clears throat> so a lot of people ask me um, if they can wash their macrame pieces. And obviously you're not going to put this piece of wood in the washing machine but if it does get dirty or like whatever you can spot treat it because this string is all 100% cotton so you can spot treat it with a damp cloth with some uh, a little bit of detergent on it if you like I always say that for it's not as bad for wall hangs like this but for coasters and you know anything you put on your table or Sometimes, like, people make macrame purses and stuff, too. So you have to clean them once in a while, right? Um, but what I will tell you guys, once you, um, once you have had this for a while, the tassels, once we make them, obviously, the tassels might start to get a little ratty looking or, like, you know, not as pretty as they once were. So what I usually do for that is use a comb. And I just comb out the tassels and you can always give them a little trim too if they look weird. Um, and one way to keep them in place, this is not so much for wall hangings because you put it up and you don't really touch it again, but like for keychains or for um, rear view mirror hangings, anything like that, that's gonna be moving around a lot. It's good to uh, use hairspray because it actually keeps all the fibers in place. And I was using like, you know, fabric glue spray for the longest time, but it made everything like so sticky and stinky. Like that stuff does not smell good at all. Uh, <laughs> oh, your dog, your dog is so cute. Um, oh my gosh, I wanna see your dog. Send me a video. <laughs> I don't have any pets, but I can just imagine, especially cats would love this too, the string going around. Bella, maybe your bunny. Oh, oops. Now there's uh, lots of animals that like to play with string. Okay. Now yeah, we still got a ways to go here. La -di yeah, sometimes when I'm like laying in bed watching Netflix doing a macrame piece, I'm like flipping this in the air and whacking into the face with it. So it's always good to know where you're putting your string. One time I almost burnt down the house because there was a candle nearby. Ooh, which reminds me. Guys, I made my own candle last night. Super excited about it. First time candle making. I found, uh, I found this store that sells big hunks of beeswax and it was like under $5. 
which not sure if I'm right on this, but I'm pretty sure that's a great deal. It was like a quarter pound of beeswax for four, 425 or 450. And I couldn't resist. I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a candle. And so I bring it home, you know, melt the wax, everything. <laughs> I try to make it <clears throat> orange and orange chai scented. So I like ripped up a chai tea bag and put some cinnamon in it and like whatever. Just doing some weird stuff, candle making. And uh, I tried to, <laughs> to burn it today. And turns out the orange peel that I put in the wax, oh, I should probably plug the computer in. The orange peel that I put in the wax um, is flammable. <laughs> so it doesn't smell that great because it's like the terpenes or something from the orange peel burning off every time I light it. So it looks nice, but <clears throat> moral of the story, don't put orange peels in your candles. <clears throat> Next time I think I'm just going to use regular old essential oils to scent my candles like a normal person would. I was having some sort of like Christmassy maker moment where I was like, oh, orange, it's going to be so pretty. Yeah, no. And also, I noticed, not sure if any of you have made candles before, but I looked at like a few different recipes and they all said, you know, add a different kind of oil to the wax so that it doesn't just like harden really quickly and crack. So I added coconut oil, but I find like when I burn the candle, it just burns right in the center and it doesn't spread at all. So something I'll have to troubleshoot if I ever do make more candles. I've always loved that though. Like the idea of candle making and soap making too is always fascinating to me. Not sure if it's because like that's the only chemistry that I could ever be good at, but <laughs> seems pretty cool and like these people that make the gorgeous soaps with like the swirls of color and stuff they look like candies I want to eat them would love to be able to do that all right well, we got it going here I'm almost Mm, three quarters finished this color. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you know what? I actually, that thought crossed my mind as well because I just bought like a, they had like a basket full of wicks, but I didn't even ask what kind it was. But when I was reading all of the um, recipes and stuff, you know, Pinterest, when I was on Pinterest looking at recipes, they said like, oh, pick a natural wick or whatever. Use a natural jute. And I was like, what? There's different wicks. So you're probably right probably the wick just because I bought like the cheap one it's probably made of like plastic or something crazy anyways didn't burn the house down so I think that's a win <laughs> okay, so now is usually the time where I would get up and walk around and take a break because realistically, who can sit and do the same thing for so long? I know I can't. I kind of have a... This has definitely helped my attention span, but that's the reason why I do it when I'm watching TV because if I just sit there and watch TV, I get bored. I gotta move around. So now I'm gonna start thinking about 
what I'm gonna put on my pizza. Super, definitely mushrooms. I love mushrooms. And, you know, if it was a takeout pizza, it would 100% be Hawaiian because that's my absolute favorite. But I don't have ham or pineapple here, so. Maybe we'll do a veggie pizza, get some mushrooms, a tomato. Wonder if we have basil in the fridge, that would be good. Okay. A little bit more. We're almost done here. How's everyone doing? Are you guys like on par here or are you on your third color still? Ooh, stuffed crust. <gasps> Genius. I didn't even think of that. Oh my gosh, I'm doing that. And you know what? Recently, so Andrew and I went to Nova Scotia, where I'm from, for a month this summer, and I rekindled my love for garlic fingers. Not sure if you guys know what garlic fingers are, but it's essentially a cheese pizza with garlic butter instead of uh, pizza sauce. Oh my god, so good. So we've been doing like a little garlic fingers with our pizza lately and ooh, gosh it's like my favorite thing in the world the only thing is i still haven't perfected donair sauce homemade so that's something i have to work on okay this is gonna be long enough perfect so i'm gonna use the longer string in the middle Still on third color, okay. Well, what I'm gonna do after this is I'm gonna show you how to make a tassel and you can practice it on one of the ones that's already done. And, uh, you know, you can always finish off afterwards. So, pull this over to the left. This thing's gonna get in the way. There we go, I'm just gonna push that over. To the left, under, and through. And that's going on the back. And I'm gonna turn this one up over. To the left. Oh my gosh, I can't stop thinking about stuffed crust. I'm so excited. So do you just stuff it with cheese or do you put like other stuff in there too? One thing that I miss about Ottawa, you guys might be able to relate with me on this, is uh, shawarma. Because to be honest, Nowhere has shawarma like Ottawa does. And even if they do have shawarma, a lot of places it's hard to find. Like they have, you know, gyro. Is it gyro or gyro? I don't know. They have gyro, which is like very similar, but it's not the same thing. And so I haven't had a good shawarma in a long freaking time since, you know, when were we in Ottawa? July? Haven't had a good shawarma since July. <laughs> I believe it. There's a shawarma place on every corner in Ottawa. And you know what's crazy is we are, like across Canada, you have to go looking for a shawarma place. I know when I went to university in Halifax, there was a shawarma place there, but it was the only one in Halifax. And then when we were in Calgary, we went looking for shawarma and there was like one place in town that did shawarma. It's crazy. And then in Ottawa, it's like 
everywhere. Every pizza shop is a shawarma shop. Ooh. Yum. Oh, stuffed pizza. Guys, I'm really hungry. <laughs> Those of you who know me know this is a usual occurrence. Andrew's been making his own pizza crust too. He's like the dough master here. I'm good at baking and like making cookies and stuff, but I could never figure out like making bread and dough and blah, blah, blah. So he makes it really well. So since the pandemic started, we've been making our own pizza dough. Oh man, that's like deep dish. That's like Chicago style or something. Amazing. It's a good idea. We got rid of our cast iron pan. That was such a dumb idea. I regret it all the time. When we were moving into the RV, it was like, <laughs> it was crazy. We pretty much just got rid of everything in our apartment and kept like some stuff, but even the stuff that we kept, we had so much stuff in the RV and we were like, oh my God, we have to get rid of more of this. So like we ended up yard sailing a lot of stuff and just like giving it away or whatever. And now I'm regretting it because we're actually, we're in Euclid and Tofino, like that area right now. And we're staying put for the winter. So it's nice because I can actually, you know, make food and cook and I don't know do baking and stuff which is something that I never did when we were on the road every day like I don't I'm not gonna we're not gonna drive for eight hours and then I'm gonna stop and make cookies at eight o'clock at night like it's not gonna happen I'm exhausted but since we've been in one place I've been you know getting back to my cooking and baking routine and I realized that um we got rid of every single baking sheet and muffin tin and loaf pan that I ever owned which is ridiculous because I had like six of everything um so I bought this pizza pan at the Dollarama the other day and I was like okay I'm gonna make cookies on it I don't know if it's my oven or the pizza pan or what was the cookies <laughs> did not turn out good they were like so burnt on the bottom and like not cooked through I don't know Anyways, I'm telling myself that it was probably the oven. It was like too high or something because the pizza pan works great for pizza. And I don't see why it shouldn't work for cookies. We'll test it out again. I'm going to make some Christmas cookies. So. Hoping to do a good gingerbread this year. Just bought the last thing of molasses they had at the co-op here. So pretty excited. Snagged that before it was gone. What's your favorite Christmas cookie, you guys? Are you guys shortbread people, gingerbread? Um, what other kind of Christmas cookie is there? I don't know. Are you just diehard chocolate chip? I actually found a great recipe for oatmeal raisin. Or sorry, oatmeal chocolate chip the other day. And I figured out the trick. So they always tell you to like soften your butter, right? But the trick is to add a little tiny bit of vegetable oil in with the butter to make it like super soft but not melted you know and it's a game changer the cookies are so soft and they stay soft like for the next couple days too and i've read somewhere that another trick is to use um powdered milk in the cookie dough which i've never done before so i have no idea how that works but Apparently it keeps your cookies really soft for a really long time. And that's what they do at like grocery stores and stuff. Okay. So I'm done doing this one. I've got my little three inches here for tassels. Um, now 
everybody. Oh, shortbread. Yeah. Do you do icing? Because you got to have icing on shortbread, in my opinion. I also really like thumbprint cookies. Those ones with, like, the jam inside. Those are really good, too. Um, okay. So, everybody stop what you're doing. We're going to make our first tassel. And then after you guys get the tassel down, then you can finish up on your own. Um, yeah. So, we're going to take a piece of long string. We'll start with the white because that was the first one we did and everybody should be done that. So see how the strings, there's like one short and then one semi short and then a longer one. Take your longest one and you're gonna cut it to be about the same length as the shorter one. See? And you can save that. We're gonna use this to make the knot and then you can trim the other two as well to be even. These ones, you can just throw them. Those are the kind of ones that we do a macrame feather with, or you can put it in the garbage if you're a wasteful person. <laughs> okay, so we have our piece of string here. It should be about, like, I don't know, I think this is like a foot long. And what you're gonna do is, did you start with the same length pieces we did? Yes. Yes, I did sh start with the same length. Um, it depends on the tension as well. So if I did mine a little tighter, then they would be shorter. I think I may have actually messed up cutting this one because it did seem way too short in my opinion, but anyways. So we're gonna start with this. We want to fold the string so that one piece is longer than the other and you're gonna have that loop at the top so you want the short piece to be on the right and the long piece to be on the left and okay this is gonna be hmm I'm gonna turn this around just so you guys can see better and uh, maybe you guys will want to do that too. I'm gonna flip it over. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to rehang it on the window here. Ow, it's stuck. Okay, oh my gosh, struggle bus. Okay, there we go. So it's hung backwards, right? You see where the end of this is the end of your spiral knots. That's where you're going to want to put the loop. So put the loop and you're going to pinch everything together in your left. Well, doesn't matter if you're left or right handed. I'm doing it with my left because I'm right handed. You're going to take the longer side of the string and you're going to wrap it around all of the strings and you want to be sure to wrap pretty tightly you're going to wrap it around about two or three times whatever however long it is and then once you're at the end you're going to stick it and eh, i'm going to go a little bit less than that so the end is going to go through the loop just like that you guys see that? Okay, so the end goes through the loop and then you pull both ends. So I'm pulling the, showing the, sorry, I'm pulling this end on the bottom down and I'm pulling this end up at the same time so that it tightens. And what you're gonna wanna see is, you're gonna wanna look for it to be up high close to where the spiral knot started so you can like wiggle it around a bit if you need to and you want to make sure that that loop actually goes under and goes like in the middle of where you were wrapping don't worry if you can't get it perfect but it should look something like that with like this extra little piece hanging out the top. All 
All right, I'm gonna do it again with my green, which is gonna be your pink or whatever color. Okay. Trim it. Now, these ones I think I can put in the garbage. <laughs> Not that crazy. All right. Now, once again, make your loop. Have one piece longer than the other. Put it up against the other strings. And start wrapping. Now, Make sure to wrap really tight here, just so it doesn't fall out. This is kind of tricky to get the hang of, but once you get it, you get it. Oh, this one isn't working for me. Okay, so I've wrapped it around twice, and I'm gonna pull the end through the loop. And now I lost where it is. Don't be afraid to pull on all of the strings until you figure out which one is the loop. There we go. So now usually you trim this little piece off. If it's short already, then it will just be like pulled in with the loop like this one is gonna be. See how there's only like a little end here. You pull that down so that it's nice and tight and it's not going to come out. And I'm going to trim those tops. And now this is the back of your hanging, so don't worry if it's like not perfectly flush. This one's real close. Okay. And that's how you make a tassel. So now you can take a comb and comb these out if you want, or you can leave them just as they are. Um, and you repeat the same process with the other side, or the other colors, I'm sorry. Mm. Any questions about the tassel, you guys? Did everybody get that? I'm doing it once again. One side longer than the other. I get it nice and close. Okay, so as you can see here, maybe you can see that, maybe you can't. Um, it's kind of far, too far down from where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna like shove it up a bit. Don't, don't be scared to manipulate the string to where you want it to be. And there we go, I'm gonna tighten it. So this is called a, a I call it a barrel knot. I've been told that it's not actually a barrel knot, that it's a gathering knot. So you may hear it called both things, but this is generally what they call a barrel knot, I think. It's starting to come together. So yeah, for those of you who didn't finish the fourth color yet, you can go back and finish that up and I'm gonna save this video so you can go back and watch it again if you want to. Um, all of these pieces of string are available on our website so minus those of you who have the light pink color we're actually out of that now. The rose color or sorry the blush color. Um, 
but these colors are available and many others. So it's all three inch string, three inch macrame string. Sorry, three millimeter. Oh my gosh, too hungry. And uh, so if you wanna make another one, go ahead. We sell these dowels too. There we go. I'm gonna tighten this. Oh, this one doesn't look too good. Oh, it's because I didn't cut it. There we go. <clears throat> okay. There we go. So now I'm just trimming everything. And yeah, like I said, don't be afraid to brush it out with a comb or some people use pet brushes to do that. Um, I think I'm gonna leave these without tassel this time, like without brushing it out this time. Looks kind of cute. And so now I'll show you, oops, once again, I'm struggling with this now. This is not the most efficient thing. Okay, so there we go. That's it. Now I'll show you how to uh, hang it. You can take one of your extra pieces of string. Doesn't have to be very long. And um, take a piece of string. I'm gonna use something a little bit longer than this, just for emphasis. Piece of string, tie a knot at the top. Now this is the easy way. So I'll show you guys the easy way and I'll show you the difficult way too if you want. So I just tied like a regular, it's called a simple knot. It's a knot that you would do with a shoelace. Here, I'll redo it, I kinda did it fast. So you take the ends you make a circle with it at the top. And then, so that's the circle. And it should look like this, somewhat like that. Sorry, this is a horrible example. And then you pull the ends around and tuck them in. It's like same as tying a shoe. So there you go. I'm gonna cut some of this off just to make it neater. And what I'm gonna do is make a lark's head knot with this. So I'm actually gonna put this uh, knot at the top and pull it through. Uh, it's a little too short. Yeah, it's way too short, sorry. Need a longer piece of string. So once again, I'm gonna do the knot. So essentially you just make a loop. You do a larynx head. There, okay, so there's your knot. You do a larynx head. So you put it on top, pull it under, pull it through. And there we go. And you can hang it on um, a tack or a command hook or whatever you like. And you put that right there, and it'll hang there. Um, if you want to learn the hard way, which is what I have here, um, this is actually called, what knot is this? This is called a double half hitch or a clove hitch knot, some people call it. Um, so here, I'll show you this. What you do is you put the string under your dowel 
you pull the end over like this. And then see how it's to the right. Now you pull it over to the left hand side. And what you're gonna wanna do, you're holding it in place. You're gonna pull this end through the front. Now, I don't usually recommend hanging a hanger like this. What I would do, go to the Dollarama, get a picture hanging kit, put a couple nails in there, and hang it on one of the little things that they give you. Um, yeah, voila. There's your hanger. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will obviously be more than happy to answer all of your questions. If you need me to go over something again, anything like that, let me know. I can direct you to either one of our previous videos or I can make a new video for something that you're questioning. Um, yeah, anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I had fun. This was a very successful first Instagram, or sorry, first YouTube live. Yes, YouTube live. Um, anyways, enjoy guys. And please feel free to share your photos with me. I would love to see how all of you did. Um, thank you. I will very much enjoy my pizza. I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> So anyways, thanks you guys and uh, keep your eyes peeled if you guys want to join in on another class We will be doing one in early February. So thanks so much for joining in. Bye